The State of the Union address allows the president the opportunity to shine a spotlight on his successes and plans for the future. But in today's fractured political climate, will Congress and the American people be open to his message? Joining us now, Matt Schlapp, chairman of the American Conservative Union and a Washington insider. <laughs> Matt, thanks for coming back to the show. Great to be with you, Lauren. You were just at the White House. What's the mood over there right now? I think they feel like they had one of the most consequential first years of a presidency we've really ever seen. Um, all the press, all the criticizing, they ended up, uh, you know, repealing the, uh, the the big part of Obamacare, which is the individual mandate, the tax cuts, put that in combination with what's happened with the president's actions and congressional action on regulatory relief. The economy is growing. GDP's and, up, yes, jobs are up. That's right. So I think they're feeling pretty good about uh, things on the in, on the important things. Now, the president is expected to strike a unifying tone. Is that even possible right now? Will it alienate his base? Well, I think it would be a mistake if out of nowhere he walked into the chamber and used all new language. Uh, the president is taking on Washington. He's taking on entrenched interests. And when you do that, there are consequences. But I do think he can unify the country to the, uh, to the purpose of continuing to get our economy rolling, getting government off the necks of entrepreneurs, letting uh, individual families feel like they have greater economic prospects, and making sure that overseas and across the globe that America is respected. That's something the American people can get behind. His rhetoric and who he is isn't going to change, at least I hope it doesn't change, because a lot of people like what he does. And the question is, can people, can Americans start to realize what he's doing is helping them. Well, the unification piece is very interesting because at the lunch today, he said that it would be wonderful if he could unify the country. I'm paraphrasing here. Yeah. But you've been in Washington a long time. Has there ever been a speech that unifies the country? I went to the uh, National Cathedral right after 9-11. I felt like that was a time when the country really pulled together. I think the country still has it, the ability to pull together, but our political leaders seem to be interested only in really marginalizing their opponents, and I think that's unfortunate. I have to talk to you about this 20-week abortion ban before sure. we go. Uh, the Senate did not have enough votes yesterday to pass it. You need 60. I think we had 50. The Republicans had 51 votes. And the president actually came out and sent a tweet, I think it was, yes. to the senator saying, hey, reconsider. Right. Yeah. Let's get this uh, back on the books. Do you think he can change hearts and minds? Yeah, because his heart and his mind was changed. And it's happening all over the country. You can see it with the next generation, the rising generation, that the pro-life message is actually winning. And it's winning over politicians because their constituents are educated on when life begins. It's really not very radical to say, uh, late in pregnancy, uh, that you should, uh, there should be protections for that unborn child. We're winning this argument, and we're winning this argument because truth is on our side. One in uh, seven countries right now have that happening. That's right. Seven yeah. countries, North yeah. Korea is one of them, we are one of them. That's right. And no. The most extreme regimes on the globe uh, have similar abortion policies than in the United States of America. We can do much better than we've done on protecting unborn life. All right. Matt Schlapp, good talk to you forever. Thank Thanks, you so Laura. much, Chairman of the American Conservative Union.